Welcome back, everybody, to Imperion Galactic Survival on 1.0. I am an old guy gaming, and this is the Getting Started in Imperion tutorial series. All right, we're picking up right where we left off. Um, I have not moved an inch since I left you guys in the last episode. Uh, so, uh, but I do want to uh, go over a couple of uh, notes and comments and so forth that you guys are, have been leaving. Again, just really appreciate uh, everybody's input and comments uh, helping me to help all of the new players learn the game. Uh, so much appreciated. So I do have two things for you. Uh, it was told to me in the comments that um, you can usually find uh, a deposit of Prometheum near the poles of the planet. So, uh, or not in the pole, on the pole, of course, because there's nothing there, but along the edges of the poles. So either the North or the South Pole. I have not noticed that myself before. Um, and I haven't confirmed that, so, you know, take that uh, for what it's worth, but this individual who commented uh, is, is uh, you know, a, a pretty pretty good guy, uh, leaves lots of comments, really appreciate him and his comments, so I'm sure he's probably correct about that. I just haven't, you know, confirmed that myself, okay? So, yeah, uh, look, look near the poles for Promethium deposits if you're looking for them. Uh, the other thing that uh, was told to me is that you can, in fact get out of the water in a hover vessel if you back out I had no idea that, that this worked so let's actually let me show this to you because I did confirm this so you know if, if you're in the water uh, we looked at in the last episode that it's very difficult to get out and you know you would think that if you're trying to get out of the water you would try and get out forward but if you actually go out in reverse you can pop right back out of the water which is really cool. Um, so very much appreciate that comment. Um, that uh, I actually just received that comment this morning too. So super cool. Really appreciate it. Um, and uh, that is good information to know. It's good information to know and information that even I myself didn't know. And, you know, like I tell you all the time, I'm also always learning new things in the game and just uh, think that's wonderful. Okay, so thank you guys again for those comments. Really appreciate it. Now let's go ahead and continue on here. Well, there is one other announcement that I want to make, and that is that um, I am, as I get time, uh, I'm working on indexing these videos. And so I just finished working on or finishing uh, episodes five and six this morning. Uh, sat today's Saturday, and it takes me a very long time to do that, you guys, because I have to go through the entire video um, and then, you know, put down the time code when when we talk about you know new things or significant things so it's just something that i am working on uh, as i go along but i want to get the the actual tutorial series itself finished first so that you guys have all of the videos and then i'll go back uh, as i get time and eventually get them all indexed uh, so episodes one through five or parts one through five are now fully indexed and all you have to do is go into the description of the video and you'll see the index with the time codes and the time codes are actual links to the video so you just click on that time code and it'll take you right to that point in the video and start playing it uh, so very useful for people who are looking for specific things and don't necessarily want to comb through the whole entire video okay so um now we are after promethium we found a medium promethium deposit which is really good actually there's a lot of promethium in a medium deposit um, but we have we have two things that we have to deal with. First is the drone, and we're gonna have to get rid of that drone. So we don't have any weaponry at all on our hover vessel, and it's also not really protected in any way. What we do have, however, is a shotgun and an, and an assault rifle and a sniper rifle. And so you know what I'm gonna do too. I'm gonna actually move the sniper rifle uh, into this slot here. So you can kill drones on foot. These guys um, are new, are neutral. They won't hurt you, of course, unless you attack them first, kind of thing. And um, if you follow the storyline, then you will you will actually interact with the Talon in the game. One of the challenges that we currently have, though, right at this moment, is that that deposit is on their land, and if you mine a mineral deposit on another faction's land and you're not friendly with that faction, then you'll, you'll, you'll actually take some hits. Um, so it's a really a matter of, you know, how, how do we deal with that right here and now? Well, 
The thing is, is with the Talon, uh, we are neutral with them, but we have quite a bit of neutral rep with them. And so we really have two choices here. We either say, fuck it, I'm just going to go mine this uh, Promethium and, you know, take a hit. And as long as I don't get all the way down to to unfriendly, it's not really going to be that big of a deal in the long run. Okay, so that's option one. Um, and that's the option that we are going to do. Option two is that you can actually start doing uh, missions for the Talon, and you get to that from the PDA. Go to the Talon tab. We just very quickly looked at this in, in I think it was episode one or two. Um, and you can do some of these missions. Pest control is the one that is the most worthwhile one to do at the very beginning. These two are story missions. I don't recommend starting... Oh, shit! Okay, here, here's what we're gonna do, here's what we're gonna do, here's what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna get our shotgun out, we're gonna get right underneath this son of a bitch, and he's not gonna be able to shoot us. And then we can take him out. All right, but, so that's how you deal with that. I didn't think he, <laughs> I didn't think he was gonna come all the way over here, but he did. All right, well, thank you, Mr. Drone. You actually helped me demonstrate what I was gonna chase you down to demonstrate anyways. Okay, I did a shift uh, click there to just quick loot this guy, and we got two uh, uh, fuel packs of Promethium, which is really good. Um, however, this doesn't help us. We need the raw Promethium to make the charges that we need for our drill and our multi-tool. Okay, well, that actually worked out. I didn't plan it that way, but it worked out. So we have dealt with the drone. So yeah, guys, if you are being attacked by drones and you're on foot, the best thing to do is get right underneath them or, you know, or at least get close enough to them to where they can't fire on you and then just take them out with your shotgun, or I could have used my assault rifle as well. That gets a little trickier and way more dangerous if you have two or more drones. I don't recommend it, but if it's a single drone and you don't have any weaponry on your vessel, that's how you take them out. You know, we, we took a couple of hits, but nothing too significant. We're fine. So, anyway, back to the Talon. Uh, what we're going to do... This is, by the way, this is a neutral critter here. Um, he... He will hurt you big time. He's got this, like, plasma spit stuff that he does. Um, so be really careful if you decide to aggro this guy. Um, we're going to leave him alone. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to make the Talon just a little bit upset with us. Not a, lot of, not a lot of upset, but a little bit upset with us. Now, one thing you might be wondering is how important is it to have rep with the Talon? Well, that's a great question because here's the thing. In my opinion... And other people might disagree with me, and that's fine. But in my opinion, the Talon are not really that important to, to get in good with. Uh, they are useful, um, and they do have, um, you know, stuff that you can buy and sell and trade with them and so forth. But pretty much everything that you and anything you can trade with the Talon, you can also trade with the Polaris. And the Polaris are by far much more important to get in good with because they're really the ones that have all the good stuff um, for the most part, right? So... I'm really not too terribly concerned about getting in real good with the Talon. What I don't want to do, though, is I don't want to make them hostile, and I really don't ideally want to make them unfriendly either, because if I get to unfriendly with them, then they will fire on me on sight. What, they won't come after me. In other words, they won't attack my base if they're unfriendly, but they will fire on me if I get within range of them. And I'd rather not do that. I'd rather not have to deal with that. So I want to I want to stay at least neutral if I can with the talent. Okay? So, let's go ahead and hop out of here. Now, I'm going to stand on my hover vessel. It's kind of hard to to stand. Okay. And the reason I'm doing this is because you know, I'm up off the ground and I have I have a, a small degree of safety if something, you know, comes along and tries to eat me um so i was gonna say something else too and i can't remember what it was now okay well maybe it'll come to me at three o'clock in the morning and then i'll call you guys up and let you know on the phone just kidding okay so yeah what we're gonna do is we're gonna mine uh, but we're gonna be really careful not to mine too much to the point where we get all the way to unfriendly with the talent so we just have to kind of keep an eye on this Oh, this is what I was going to show you. Okay, so notice that when I hover my cursor um, over the Talon, by the way, um, you get to your uh, the, um, the the factions menu from this little button up here. So I just go into my, my menu with the tab key, and then I hit that button. 
There might be a direct button for it too, I'm not sure, but I just I just use the tab key. Okay, so anyway, if I hover my cursor over the uh, talon here and I look on the right hand side, it's basically going to tell me the actions that will affect my reputation with him. What we're looking for is all, all the way kind of down more towards the bottom, about two thirds, three quarters of the way down, it says mine or in talon territory. Um, you get a minus five rep hit when you mine or in their territory, unless you are friendly with him or better. So if I was really concerned, or, or let me put it this way, if this was Polaris territory instead of Talon territory, I would probably take a sidestep and do some side missions for the Polaris to get to friendly with them first before I mined this Promethium. Or maybe I would mine just a tiny, tiny bit so it really didn't make that much difference in the long run, you know? Um, so just be aware of those... Ooh, we got a nasty over there. Oh no, that's just a... Is that... Wait, is that a cricket or is that a arachnid? Oh yeah, that's just a cricket. Um, so just be aware of how rep and factions and all that sort of thing work because, you know, it will definitely impact your gameplay. So, we haven't really talked about mining by hand other than, you know, just doing surface stones. And incidentally, um, surface stones you don't take a rep hit from mining surface stones on a faction of territory. It's just the actual deposits themselves. So, let's go ahead and cover how to mine by hand. You have two ways to do this. You can literally mine by hand by using your, um, you know, your survival tool or your mining drill once you get one of those, which is kind of why we're doing this all in the first place. But the problem with that is that you're digging yourself down into a hole that might either be difficult to get out or it's just going to be more work for you to do it. What is preferred, at least what I prefer and what most other experienced Imperion players will do, is to mine with the drone. Because if you mine with the drone, then you can dig straight down to the ore um, and you can get to it while you yourself, in your body, stay safe on top of your hover vessel. Okay? Um, so I recommend that whenever you do any deposit mining and you're doing it by hand as opposed to doing it with a mining vessel, which is late, you know, later on down the road here, um, that you stand on top of your hover vessel, if you have one, and you use your drone to mine. That's what we're going to do. So I'm going to press the F5 key and get in my drone. Now, you may notice that there are these little blue outlines underneath the ground. For certain types of resources... <laughs> Promethium being one of them, the ores are in little chunks or in little nodes under the ground instead of just in one big blob of, of mineral. Um, iron, copper, silicon, um, some of those are in one big blob, but for Promethium and Arrestrum, I think, and Zascosium, you know, those are some of the higher, higher level ores. <laughs> Those you're going to find um, in chunks. And actually, that might not be true for, for Zascosium and, and Arrestrum now that I think about it. All, what I'm trying to say is that there's going to be a couple of things uh, like Promethium and like um, Pentaxa. I know Pentaxa for sure is, uh, will be in these little nuggets. So, you need this thing. You need this ore scanner in your inventory in order to see those nuggets. If I didn't have the ore scanner, I wouldn't be able to see where these nuggets are. What that means then, even if I know that there's a deposit here, I could dig for a hell of a long time and either not find them at all or only find one or two of them because I don't know exactly where to go. The other thing you'll notice too is that these are at different depths, right? They're kind of all over down there. And so without a scanner, it's going to be very difficult for me to find all of them unless I just do like a big strip mine. And that's going to take forever, especially with the survival tool. All right. So... That's where this little ore scanner comes in handy, and the game did give this to us right from the get-go, but if it didn't, you know, we can learn this uh, and construct it in the portable constructor if we needed to, or if we lost it, or something like that. The other thing, though, that you need in order to see the nuggets is you also have to have your survival tool um, activated, or your mining tool if you have it, right? So notice that I have my color tool, or my texture tool activated. I have to switch to the survival tool in order to actually see those nodes. And I, you might even have to be, yeah, you even have to be in resource drill mode on top of that, right, to see them. Okay, so 
let's recap that really quick because it's very important. You have to have an ore scanner in your inventory. You don't equip it, you just have it in your inventory. And you have to have your mining drill or your survival tool set to resource drill mode in order to actually see the notes. Don't try and mine this stuff without those two things or it's just going to be a pain in the ass and you might not even find anything at all depending upon how spread out they are and how many there are. Very small promethium deposits will sometimes only have one, one stone in the whole thing and it could be anywhere within that area. Okay? All right, so we're mining with our drone and it's raining. How about that? One other very important thing for you to know about using your drone in general, whether you're mining or doing anything else, and I might have covered this earlier. I can't remember if I did. Um, so let's just cover it again. When I first activate my drone, you'll notice in the upper right hand corner that the mini map does not appear. In order to get it to appear, all you have to do is just quickly go into your menu and back out and then it will appear. So just tap the tab key um, and come back out and then it appears. This game has been this way since day one with the drone and I don't understand why Elyon has not fixed that. Hopefully someday they will, but that's the way it still works even in version 1.0. So let's repeat that, that's very important. Situational awareness is what this is about you guys because remember, when I'm in my drone, I'm not in my body, and I'm not, uh, and my body is somewhere else other than my drone. And that's important because if I'm not aware of that, I could be getting attacked by something and not necessarily even know it. Okay, so I hit F5, I tap the tab key in and out so that my mini map appears, so I can still keep an eye on the mini map, um, and I'm a little bit more situationally aware. Very important to do that. Okay. So, let's go ahead and mine. When I mine in uh, with a drone, I usually just punch a hole straight down rather than, you know, try and go down at an angle. Now, going down at an angle is not a bad idea in the early game for safety reasons because, you know, if I do do a hole straight down, I could potentially fall in it later. However, even if I do fall in it later, it's not going to be that hard to get out because I'll just dig my way back out in that case. So it's just quicker and more efficient to punch a hole straight down. Now, when you get the mining drill, you have the filler tool attached to it. The filler tool basically fills in terrain. Um, and so what I will do once I have the actual mining tool is I will fill in my hole when I'm done so that I don't fall into it later on. Or more importantly, on a multiplayer server, my friends don't fall into it later on. Okay, but we can't do that, unfortunately, with the survival tool because it doesn't have a filler option. Okay, let's go ahead and start digging. So we're just going to dig straight down with the drone. And of course, you know, once we kind of get under the, the main crust, you know, then we really just start aiming towards one of the nuggets until we get to it. And notice that we're also, you know, um, mining or harvesting stone at the same time, which is good because we need the stone too. And there's a Promethean nugget. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do before I actually mine this. Um, if I'm in a potentially hostile area, in addition to the minimap, I'm also going to periodically press the M key for map, and I'm just going to check my surroundings and make sure I don't see any red blips moving towards me. Okay? Uh, very important to do that. Again, it goes back to that situational awareness. Um, there could be another drone down here that I don't see that could potentially be moving towards us. Um, so I want to periodically, you know, every, I don't know, it depends upon how hostile the area is that you're in, but I would say every 10 to 15 to 20 seconds or so, just quickly pop the map open and just look around and make sure nothing's coming towards you. So, okay. So very important to do that. Now, the other thing is, um, um, before I actually mine this stone here, this Probetium stone, I'm going to go back into my faction menu and I'm just going to take a look. Okay, so we're at 1441 faction um, neutral with the Talon right now. Okay, so let's mine this. Okay, we got 64 Promethium ore just from that one little nugget. That's actually a lot of Promethium for us and it'll do everything we need it to do here in the very early game. Now let's go back and look at our faction. So... It's now 1441. What was it? 
it was yeah i think it was 1446 or 47 before because it does tell us down in the lower right hand corner that we lose minus five when we mine ore so you know what that is insignificant we have gotten ourselves a nice little pile of ore for the very early game we don't need any more than that right now and for all intents and purposes we we that had no impact to speak of on our rep with the talent so very good okay now what we are going to do especially because we know that this big well medium um deposit is here there's a lot of promethium in here you guys a lot uh for for the early game it would behoove us now to actually become friendly with the talent for the sole purpose if nothing else of coming over here and mining the rest of this out later so we will probably work on that at some point. We're not going to worry about that today, though, because our main goal right here and now is to get our multi-tool and our actual drill, our real drill, made, because they're so much better than our survival tool. Excellent. Okay. That worked out quite well. That worked out quite well. Um, this deposit will now stay marked on the map um, moving forward. Uh, if we wanted to, though, we could also bookmark it uh, or add a, a map marker to it. And when I, when I bookmark a deposit, I usually use this little crystal icon. That's completely just up to you. It doesn't matter what icon you actually use. Just so, you know, I know where it's at. Just be really careful, though, guys, with, with adding actual map markers, because sooner or later, you're going to start, the game's going to start to fill up with a bunch of these, and it does start to kind of clutter your screen. So you have to use a little bit of discretion, um, you know, when you're using those things. If I don't mark it... The game will still remember where it is, and I can still find it on this map later if I wanted to. Now, we do have another resource very close by, and there it is. It's an iron deposit. Okay, so how are we doing, by the way? So we've discovered all eight iron deposits on this planet. Uh, we have one more silicon, one more copper, three more prometheums, and a gold to find at some point. But there's still quite a bit of planet here that we have not quite uncovered yet through exploration. But we have, in fact, found all of the iron deposits, which is pretty interesting. I'm not going to do this right now, but if I went around and mined out all of the rest of these iron deposits right now, what would happen is the game would then start sending meteorites, iron meteorites, down to the planet. When that happens, and we'll probably see this at some point in the future, maybe, depends upon how far we take this tutorial series, but when that happens, you get an alert on the screen that says something to the effect of, there's an incoming meteorite, you know, watch out for it kind of thing, because actually, if it actually hits you, it can kill you um, or damage your ship or whatever. And if you're actually close enough to where it's coming down, you'll see it streak across the sky, you know, with a little with a little burner tail and everything. It's actually kind of cool looking. Um, once the meteorite lands, um, then you still the game will still kind of flash like a little contrail of smoke when you get kind of near it so to help you kind of locate it but once it lands then you have this big rock of pure iron in this case right on the surface is just there for the taking and it's easier to mine than you know mining underground but that only happens once you've exhausted the actual deposits that come with the, the planet uh, it, you know it, when it was first generated um i more i do that more on the moon than I do on a planet uh, because moons are easier to get around on. They're smaller and you can get to meteorite mining usually much quicker than you can on a planet. All right, so that uh, covers some very important information about mining and a little bit of information about reputation. So what we want to do now is we want to get back to our base, which is way over here, really damn near on the other side of the planet. So what we're going to do is we're going to kill two stones with one bird Yes, I know. I said that. And we're going to keep going actually to the west and, and open up more of the planet as we go back to our base. We might as well, guys, because it's about the same distance either way. So we might as well just uncover some more territory whilst we're at it. I don't think I mentioned this to you. However, you also get XP for discovering new things. And so that's another way that you can get XP in the early game is by going around and just uncovering and discovering things, too. Okay, so we're going to just start heading west here, and we're going to um, see what else we can uncover uh, as we go. And we'll just keep, you know, working our, our little detector here.
We're going to uh, shift F on these guys to quick loot them. And there's a couple of silicon stones. There's one there and two over here, so we might as well just go ahead and grab them, because here they are. You can't do this here. Try further east or west. Oh, okay. Well, hey, guess what? Here's the next thing you need to know. Um, on each planet, there's going to be this um, longitudinal, uh, longitudinal... Boy, I just butchered that. <laughs> Along the, the vertical line of the planet, the longitude of the planet, um, there's going to be this kind of seam. Now, old Imperion used to have an actual visible... It was kind of like a barrier, and it was like this big green shimmering wall kind of thing. Um, and that indicated w um, where each end of the map um, connected. Connected, okay? That's the best way to explain it. It's kind of weird. And when you went through that barrier, you couldn't see what was on the other side until you actually went through it. It actually was kind of dangerous because sometimes you would go through the barrier and there would be an enemy enemy base right on the other side and they would start firing on you. Um, so it was always a little it was always a little sketchy going through you know the barrier uh, in the earlier uh, versions of this game. So what they did, I don't know two to three alphas ago, somewhere along there, don't quote me on that, they changed it so they basically removed that barrier so it was no longer visible. Uh, along with doing that, they also made it so that we could cross the poles because the same thing kind of occurred at the poles. There was this big barrier around the edge of the pole and you could not go beyond that. It was because of the fact that this is really, if you think about it, this is really just a flat map, right? But what they do is they take the flat map and they kind of wrap it around and then the barrier is where the two ends meet. It was a flat rectangular map, so there was also the poles had nothing, and so they also had to put the barrier on the poles. And it's just the way they had to deal with it at the time with the way the code worked. Well, they fixed that, or they improved it, I should say, by making it so that you can now cross the poles, though there is nothing here. This is all just a void, but you can cross it, so it's better than having to go around, right? Um, and they also made the... the um, <clears throat> the longitude barrier disappeared too. So now I can just keep going <clears throat> and, you know, it, it, I don't see that damn barrier and I know what's on the other side and it doesn't ruin my immersion. But, again, just because of the way that the code works in the game, and I can't explain the details of it, but this little area here is basically like a no-build zone, okay? Um, so when you get into this little strip, you won't be able to place stuff down on the ground or you won't be able to build anything. And you're going to see this on every planet and every moon in the game. Okay? So that's what that's all about. So unfortunately, I can't actually mine that silicon, but it's all right. Can we... Are we far enough out to get this? Yes, we are. Yeah, that was actually a very um, cool change that they made when they eventually made it so that we no longer could see or had to deal with those barriers and that we could cross the pole when you if you ever do cross the pole like i said it's basically just a void there's nothing there you can't build anything there or do anything there all you can do is cross it to get to the other side but it does save you some time for sure okay so we did manage to pick up a little bit of silicon anyways Let's go ahead and hop in here, and then we'll continue on um, moving back towards our base. Now, I got a little bit uh, to the south, too. So what I might actually do is I might bookmark my base. Um, so that way it creates a waypoint for me. And here's another thing that's really important. We, we I can't show this to you right now, but when you do create these waypoints or these bookmarks, you can see them from space. That's important because when I'm up in space without this bookmark, I don't really know where my base is. Remember, this game simulates um, real-world physics, or, you know, to some extent anyways, which means that the planet's rotating. It's always rotating, just like a real planet would. 
And so, you know, if I take off into space from where I currently am and then go do stuff and, and then come back in the same exact spot, the planets will have rotated by then and I might be landing somewhere else. I will be landing somewhere else. So if you bookmark your base, then you can see that bookmark from space and you know where to go to get back down to it. And we'll eventually go up into space and then, you know, you'll see that in action. Okay, so we've bookmarked our base um, and it is this way. So now we know um, which direction to head in and we'll just keep kind of following that waypoint as we work our way back to the base. Now, you can see, guys, that my screen has really gotten cluttered up, right? With the, the deposits that we've marked and the couple of bookmarks that we have and that sort of thing. So, you can temporarily remove that by hitting the F6 key. If I tap the F6 key, I make that all disappear. I think I did show this to you in episode one or two. I can't remember for sure, but let's just go through it again because now it's affecting us. If I hit F6 a second time, it actually removes my HUD. And if I hit F6 a third time, it removes everything from the screen. And now I can really get into the game and get immersed into the game and or take a really nice screenshot with all, all, all that stuff cluttering up the screen. How do you bring it back? Hit F6 again, right? So basically, it's just a toggle. Hit it once, remove the bookmarks. Hit it twice, remove the HUD. Hit it a third time, remove the interface, the GUI. And then you have a nice clean screen, and then hit it a fourth time, and everything comes back. Okay. Now, some of that um, stuff that we saw was just from the scanner, and it'll go away after about, I don't know, 30 seconds or however long it shows up. But you will... As you go along, you will start to your screen will start to actually clutter up with actual you know permanent bookmarks. And so, if you want to take them out of the way, uh, you know even if just temporarily, that's how you do it. Okay, we've got a rocket drone up here. Um, rocket drones are dangerous in the sense that they can really um, you know pack a punch, but you can also very easily dodge their rockets. So here again, if you get right underneath it you can kill it. Now, here's the thing, though. Um, you, and There's something else that I, I made a mistake here, too, that I'll explain as soon as I get out of range of this guy. Okay. I don't want to piss off the Xerax too terribly much at this point. Um, let's take a look at that for a second. We're going to go into the rep screen here. And... So we're getting really close to becoming hostile with the Xerax because we've killed a few of their drones now. Now, never mind the fact that their drones attacked us first. That doesn't matter. We attacked them, and so we're the bad guy. <laughs> isn't, the way, isn't that the way of the world, right? Um, so we need to be really careful because I don't want to get to hostile with these guys until our base is actually ready to defend itself. If we get hostile right now, They'll start attacking us, and we are not ready for them to do that. And they could seriously, you know, ruin our day. So be really careful with the Xerax, in particular in the early game, and make sure that you don't drop to hostile until you are ready to, your base is ready to defend itself. And we, we will get there. We're just not there yet. Okay, so keep an eye on that. Um, my advice to you is don't kill any Xerax drones unless you absolutely have to. So, for example, we had to kill the drone by the Prometheum. We, we didn't have a choice because it was going to stay there and keep shooting at us, and we needed the Prometheum. In that case, we had to do it, but um, don't just go out and start killing Xerax drones until you are ready for them uh, to attack you, because they will as soon as you drop down to hostile. Really important. Okay, here's the mistake that I made. Um, we were over here, and I bookmarked my base... But what the game actually did is it had the bookmark appear on the eastern horizon. Why? Because we're just a little bit closer. Um, well, no, actually, I think it's because we're still, we were still on the eastern side of the, the Terminator thingamadoodle here. That's not really the Terminator, but, you know, where the, where the barrier, the invisible barrier is. Um, so we were still on this side of it, so it actually appeared to the east. And so I looked at it, and I wasn't paying attention, and I started going towards it, and then we actually started going back the way that we had come. So what we want to do is we still want to continue going west, but as soon as we cross over the barrier, then that 
bookmark should appear on uh, to the west of us, okay? So let's go back to the west, and um, as soon as we cross the, the divider there, we should then see our base appear on the western horizon, or I mean, our, well, our waypoint to our base, I should say, on the western horizon. Okay, so we just crossed the divider, or we're right in the middle of it, and now you saw, you can see that our, our waypoint just popped into view uh, now on the western horizon. Okay, so just be aware of that, just understand how it works so it doesn't confuse you uh, as you're navigating on a planet or a moon in the game. All right, we have three thingamadoodles in front of us that are purple in color are, are they're kind of a almost a lighter uh, you know a, a, you could almost think of it more of a hot pink color and that's important because the creel faction in this game is is purple it's more deeper purple darker purple whereas the legacy faction is the the more pinkish color okay um we found i think oh okay here's here's another thing here's another thing we have also found an irradiated ir irradiated biome Okay, so this place is very dangerous in the very early game. Um, it's dangerous because it's irradiated, first of all. You heard the Geiger counter start go off when I entered it. It also has assassins, um, which are um, legacy, or actually, no, they're Creel um, creatures, and they're very dangerous, and they will attack you. Um, and I think there's also potentially like the alien bugs that can spit the plasma stuff at you, so also very dangerous. And there could be, um, you could run into Xerax troops um, also inside of the irradiated biome. All I'm trying to say is it's very dangerous. What's nice about the irradiated biome, though, is that you can find surface Promethium stones. Um, and I did mention that yesterday. You know, one way to potentially find Promethium is to find an irradiated biome. And it also will have cobalt stones. Cobalt's a mineral that we haven't talked about, but it's you want you you can think of cobalt kind of as a mid uh, a mid-level ore that you need, you know, for, for uh, you know, mid-level items in the game. So you can actually find cobalt on the ground in here. Right now, though, guys, we want to stay out of here because we don't have any way, any protection at all from radiation. If we go in there and we stay in there too long, we're going to get radiation sickness, and then that's going to cause some serious issues for us. But it's nice to know where this is because later on, once we're a little bit better equipped, in other words, once we can, you know, our suit can handle the radiation and or we have an enclosed cockpit so we can jump back into it so we're not constantly being bombarded by the radiation um, and probably have a couple Gatling guns also equipped on our vessel, then we can go into here and we can grab some of those resources that we're going to need. So it was kind of nice that we actually found that, and, you know, that's why you want to, of course, explore in the game, so you do start to find things like that. Uh, the other thing, too, is notice that inside of here, we have um, three more resources, and I would bet you my bottom dollar that at least one, if not two of those, are Promethium, and the gold might even be in there, too, because, of course, you know, the game's going to put the more valuable resources in the harder-to-get places in most situations. It looks like some of these legacy buildings remember this is the the nasty alien faction um uh or may, may be in this biome too so right now we're going to go check out what this alien facility is because it's you know it's still outside of the radiated biome but we're not going to go into the biome now um, when we are more better equipped later on um then then we'll go into it now i just heard another nasty creature now, okay, that, that guy is very dangerous. Stay away from him. What he will do is he, he actually spits this plasma crap out of his... He used to spit it out of his ass, but now he... Oh, shit! <laughs> there it is. And it's, and it's also... Notice that it's it'll actually track me. Let's see if we can get him to shoot at us again. Come on, dude. You know you want to. I don't know if you guys noticed this or not. Okay. See, see how it's actually trying. His spit is tr is trying to track me. It's like a almost a homing rocket. So this guy's really dangerous. Don't don't let him hit you uh, in the early game. He'll damage your vessel and he'll damage you as well if it, if it hits your body. All kinds of cool stuff, guys, that we're discovering and learning. 
All right, let's go over here and see what this resource is. Okay, that's a silicon deposit. So I think that's our last, yep, that's our last silicon deposit. So we've discovered all of those now too. All right, now we, we can get to this one alien facility um, that's right here because it's not inside of the irradiated biome. Oh, the abandoned reactor. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Guys, that place is super dangerous. Um, I actually did this in my Let's Play series last week, I think it was, a few episodes back. If you guys are following my Let's Play series. Um, and they, they, they had changed it, and I didn't know that they had changed it. And it, it was, it's much, much more dangerous now than it was the last time that I had done it. Um, so we did manage to get through it. It took me three episodes to get through the whole thing, but it's good to know this is here because here again, this is a POI that once we are equipped, we could potentially come and do it. And there's a lot of really good high level loot, um, inside of this place that, you know, that we're going to need. So I'm going to go ahead and bookmark this too. Again, I don't have to, but I just, you know, I'm going to, for now, if I get to a point later on where I feel like I have too many bookmarks and my screen is too cluttered, I can remove some of those. The game will, you know, keep this on the map, um, but with it bookmarked, I don't have to remember exactly where it was. Okay, good. So that's good to know. Um, all right, guys, we are going to um, kind of head, you know, north, north, uh, northwest a little bit uh, and continue working towards our base. And we're going to avoid nasty creatures that spit plasma out of their butt. Well, I guess it's out of their mouth. And let's get back to our base so we can get our tools made. And then we're going to have to wrap up this episode. All right, home sweet home. That was a nice little um, exploration, a little expedition that we went on. Um, <clears throat> very useful. We learned a lot of cool things. We discovered some new things. We got ourselves some Promethium, which was our, our, our primary goal. Um, <clears throat> and now what we can do is we can... Um, why didn't I turn my light on earlier? I, I, I totally spaced that off. <laughs> I forgot we had a light on our, on our suit. Uh, okay, let's just pretend that never happened. Um, anyway, let's eat some meat because we're really hungry here. And, and we're going to put um, the perishable and organic stuff also inside of our refrigerator uh, so we don't lose that stuff. Uh, so we have five more pieces of meat at the moment. I think we're just going to turn those into a grilled steak as well. Remember, shift click will queue up ten of those. Um... And then let's put the stone and the steel plates, the fiber, the silicon, and the optical fibers. I'm going to hang on to that for a second because I want to talk a little bit more about it. The alien thorn, that's a medical item, so we'll put that in the refrigerator because that's our input for our medical devices. We got some laser rifle cells off of that um, Xerox guy that we killed. What I'm going to do with this, these two Promethean packs is I'm just going to throw those right on into the base. Okay, and that fills us almost all the way back up. For now, we're going to put the laser rifle cells in the, in the output. So this is both our output and currently our storage, our general storage. And so let's talk about the Promethean for a second now. What I like to do when I get a hold of some pre Promethean, assuming, you know, I've got enough and I don't need to use all of it at once, I like to keep a little bit of this in reserve. So let's go ahead and keep, say, like 20 in reserve, and we're going to put it in the output. And um, the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to accidentally use everything up until it, and, you know, not have any later when I need it. Okay, so I, I just keep a little bit of that in reserve. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put the rest of this into our input and we're going to go here and there's going to, there's two things we want to do. All right. We want to make the, um, the drill 
And can wait a minute, can we not make the drill in in the small constructor? Or did I forget to learn it? Let's look. I can't remember now. We can't. Oh my goodness. Okay. Check this out. We've talked about this before, but here, here is here is this happening in action. Notice that the drill has the light blue and the little red dot up here, which means it can only be made in a large constructor or an advanced constructor. Very interesting. I I would have thought I, that we could make this in the small constructor, but I guess we we can't. Probably whenever I've made it in the past, I already had a large constructor, so I just wasn't paying attention to that. We can, however, make the multi-tool in the small constructor, because the small constructor is kind of this little, um, you know, peach type color, and we do see the little peach or maybe yeah, pinkish brown, I don't know what the hell you call it, salmon. <laughs> uh, we can see the that colored square, uh, I'm sorry, here for the multi-tool. So let's, let's actually make a multi-tool. Because, guys, you know, I demonstrated this a couple episodes ago, but this thing is so much better than the survival tool. Um, sounds like we've got a, a cricket that's coming here to provide some food for us. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your contribution. He was just waiting at the door. We need to put a no soliciting sign outside. Um, all right, so we, we're making the multi-tool. And it is now here. Okay, so we're going to... We're pretty much going to be done with the survival tool if we can make the uh, the drill. So what we're going to have to do, guys, is we're going to have to make us a, 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 a large constructor in order to make the drill. And you know what? That's fine because we need a large constructor anyways. The question is, can we make it now? Um, it looks like we need to probably learn it but actually before we we do that all right so we can make the large constructor in the small constructor but there's a couple things i want to talk about and I, I, I didn't really go over this in any detail when i was explaining how the constructor works a few episodes back notice that we can make it in here, and the reason I know that I can make it in here is because it shows up. If I didn't see the large constructor in this list, that means you can't make it in this constructor. And then we would go back to our um, our tech tree and look at what the requirements were, like we just did a few moments ago. If you see an item in here with a padlock, we know that we have to learn it first. Okay, so we've, we have covered that. But notice that the large constructor has kind of a blue shading behind it, and then we have a few items down here that has a gray shading behind it. What that means is that I have the resources to make this. I just don't have, I haven't learned the skill for it yet, but I have the resources. What this means is not only can I not make it because I haven't learned it, but I also don't have the resources. Now, if you look at the tooltip, um, I know probably that my camera is blocking this. Let's see. Yeah, that should work. It's blocking in a little bit, but it should be okay. All right, so look at the input items in this tooltip. We have some yellow items, we have some green items, and we have some red items. What does that mean? The green items means I already have that component. It's already made. I either found it and put it in there, or I made it you know, earlier or whatever. So I have optical fibers on hand. The yellow items indicate that I have the resources to make those items, but the items themselves are not made, or I don't have all of them that I need. So I might have, uh, I have, if you look on the left-hand side, I do have one electronics already made, but I need five. So the yellow indicates you've got, you do have the resources that you need, but, but you're going to have to make them. And that will then, of course, affect the time that it's going to take to do this. And then, of course, the red Items mean uh, that I don't have the resources to make those items. So I, so you know, I'm going to have to find those things, either their base resource or the direct items themselves through salvaging or looting that sort of thing, or even purchasing. You can buy some of that stuff before I can make it. Okay, so let's just recap that really quick. Anything that's light blue means I can make it. I've got the resources. I just need to learn the item first. Anything that is gray means. I don't have the resources to make that. 
And then anything that is green in the item list, in the input items list, I have. Anything that's yellow, I don't have, but I do have the resources to make the component. I just don't have the component or the right quantity of components. And then red, of course, means I don't have the resources to make those components. Okay, that's important stuff. I should have covered that, you know, when we talked about portable constructors a few episodes ago, but, you know, um, we're talking about it now. So that now you know. <laughs> now you know. All right, so what we have to do is hit the F3 key, go into the tech tree, go to base, scroll down and find the large constructor. It costs us seven points. You can learn this as soon as you hit level five, by the way. Uh, and we're just going to double click on it to learn it. Now we're going to go into our small constructor and we're going to um, go ahead and queue up a large constructor and make that. Notice it says craft time 30 seconds. So that's basically how long, that's how long, okay, that's actually another thing we should talk about. You guys can't see that because of my camera. Um, let's, okay, let's look at the wireless connector. See how it says at the bottom craft time uh, 10 seconds? That's how long it takes to craft the actual wireless connection. It do that does not take into account how long it takes for it to first make all the components that it needs to craft the device itself. Okay? Uh, so keep that in mind, too. Now, um, we're almost done here, guys. One thing we're going to have to be mindful of once we bring in the large constructor is we're going to have to be mindful of the power and the CPU that it's going to consume on our base. All right? So we're going to be fine with it but we just need to be aware of it so that you know we don't get to a point where we're running our base out of fuel um or we don't have enough cpu to support all of the items so as we add more components and start upgrading the base we've got to pay attention to how it's affecting power and how it's affecting cpu we now have our large constructor we're moving up in the world. It's fan freaking tastic. But guess what? This thing weighs 4.11 tons. I might not be able to put it in my own inventory to put it down. That's okay. We have the wireless menu. We're going to connect to the output um, container with the wireless. Then we're going to put the large constructor on our wireless toolbar. Remember, you can switch back and forth between your personal toolbar and your wireless toolbar from these buttons. Or you can press the T key, T for toolbar. Okay, and then I'm going to just choose where I want to put this. So for now, I think it, we're just going to put it right in this corner here, and that should work just fine. And like any other block, you know, you can rotate it if you want to. You can even rotate it and put it, you know, up on the wall if you if you wanted to, like that. I mean, we're not going to do that, but you could. Some In some cases, it might make sense to do that. And then, you know, it doesn't matter which direction you put it as far as using it, but aesthetically... I always like to put it to, to where either this, you know, this side is out and or this side is out. Once we have it, we plop it down and voila, we got ourselves a large constructor. Isn't it a beautiful thing, you guys? Now, we can even make it more beautiful by painting it. Let's just make it, uh, let's make it orange. Why not? Let's make it orange. Or maybe we'll make it kind of more yellow, construction yellow. Looks like we did that with this, too. So let's make this look blue. For no other reason other than it's aesthetically pleasing to my old guy brain. All right. So, <laughs> so we've colored it. Not You don't have to do that, of course, but it's just it makes it nicer. All right. Now, we got to go into the constructor. We press F on it, and we have to assign its input and output. We already did this with the small constructor. It works exactly the same with the large constructor. And so for now, we're just going to assign it to our input bin... And we're going to assign the output to our output bin. Makes sense, right? This guy right here. And that also demonstrates that you can have multiple constructors using the same input and output. They don't have to have their own independent. You might want to do that in some cases, though, depending upon what the purpose of that constructor is. For example, I might have a larger base later on, and I might want to have a constructor that's purely dedicated to creating uh, or to manufacturing ingots, let's say. Though you'd probably want to use a furnace for that later on, but if I didn't have access to a furnace, um, and in that case, I might also want to then create um, specific inputs and outputs just for ores or ingots. That's You don't have to do that. That's just 
however you want to organize your base and handle the logistics and so forth. Okay, guys. So we've got uh, our large constructor in place. We've set our input and output. Now we're going to go to the tools and we're going to make ourselves a wonderful drill, except for dot. Gone it. We're missing a freaking energy matrix. Okay. What do we need? We need for an energy matrix. So what? <laughs> we're gonna, nothing's ever easy, right? That's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, components and we're going to find an energy matrix. And look what it says. We need cobalt for that. Son of a. Oh, man. Okay. Well, cobalt. Guess what we're going to do in the next episode? We're going to go back to that irradiated biome and we're going to get ourselves some cobalt and hopefully we don't die in the process. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share out the video, and we'll see you in the next episode. Don't forget, you can find the series um, table of contents in the descriptions of these videos, and I am working on indexing all of them too. I've got uh, parts one through six indexed, and I'll continue to work on those as we go along. It takes me a long time to do that, so I can only do it a little bit at a time. Guys, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.